Hello there, Drew Hannish of Whiskey Lore, and time for another whiskey tasting in a different setting today because I'm actually in Belfast in Northern Ireland. And over the last couple of days, I've been doing some traveling and decided that I was going to try to record videos each evening after going to the distilleries that I'm on during this mammoth tour I'm doing across Northern Ireland and Ireland. But sometimes you just get in late or definitely was jet lagged the first couple of days because I got in at like 4.30 in the morning on Sunday. And the first stop that I did was at Tullamore Dew after stopping in the town of Trim where they have uh, basically the castle that was used for the staging of York in Braveheart, which was pretty cool. And walking around the town was very uh, cool on top of that, but I was very groggy and uh, needing some rest. So I took a few cat naps before I headed over to Tullamore Dew, which was my first tour. And that is, this is the thing with Irish distilleries right now. Some of them have tours, some of them do not. And so I'm gonna tell you some of the ones that do. And the other ones that I'm going to visit are ones I'm visiting because I'm putting together some information for the Whiskey Lore, the whiskey-lore.com website, and also for a book coming up on Irish whiskey. And so one of the things that I did when I went on this trip, and I suggest you do this as well, especially if you're in a country like Ireland that has a 0.03% uh, drink driving law, you're not gonna want to do a full tasting when you're on a tour. Bring little bottles and then take a sip, nose it, sip it with everybody, enjoy that experience, then fill up your little bottles, take them home with you or to back to your Airbnb or your bed and breakfast. I definitely recommend bed and breakfasts on your, on your tours because you get full Irish breakfast in the morning. You don't have to eat again until the end of the day. So um, that's kind of the way I'm, I'm pulling this trip off. But um, these are the two samples I brought with me. So what I did was I, we got three things to sample at the end. There actually were five drinks. The first drink was an Irish coffee that they made that was exceptional. And Tullamore Dew was a component of the original supposedly Irish coffee. And so only makes sense that they would make an Irish coffee. And it was so cool looking. Uh, check Instagram and you will see the photo of that um, drink because it looks like a Guinness. It, it really does, which I think is so cool. So not my normal drinking wear, unfortunately, but um, we'll do our best on this. So the first one that I have here is the Tullamore Dew XO, which is a Caribbean rum cask finish. And this, non-age stated, 43% alcohol, and hard to smell at the bottom of this glass. But you get some of the tropical fruit notes in there um, maybe a little pineapple, a little mango. Um, I'm not a big fan of rum finishes personally, so you may not want to take my rating on this <laughs> or maybe it ends up being really good. So let's find out together. Mm. Oh, very pleasant drinking. Ooh, this would be very easy to drink those tropical fruit notes stay right there on the palate. The mash bill on this is a, it's basically not really a mash bill. It's more of a blend of single malt, single pot still, which we'll talk a lot about during this journey through Ireland, which is a Irish style and then grain spirits. Wow, man, yeah, the fruit notes on that really stay through. And you know what I like about this whiskey? It gives you like the like the pineapples and the bananas and all that. But what I don't like about rum cask finishes is that it's, it's too sweet for me. It's just too sickly kind of sweet, almost like a saccharine sweet that I don't really dig that much. And so this doesn't really have that. Um, I'm, I'm impressed by that. I think it's... Uh, it's a really nice whiskey. So um, I would have to be in the mood for, like I'd wanna be a whiskey drinker who's in the mood for a 
pina colada because there's no coconut in it, don't worry, but um, it, it's just kind of that something you feel like you could probably be sipping on the beach and you, it would just make sense with what you're, uh, with the place that you're at. So I got to cleanse the palate because I'm doing two drinks. Normally I just do one, but the second drink here is going to be the 12 year Tullamore Dew, which is um, aged in a combination of American Oak bourbon, ex-bourbon, and sherry, and aged for 12 years. So, let us find out what we get on the nose on this one. It's really hard to smell out of a big glass like this. My nose is not the, the greatest in the world anyway. I'm going to take a sip and see if that brightens up the nose a little. Mm. Ooh, that one is sweeter on the finish. Hmm. I'm going to check the chart here and see uh, if there's any listing of... Um, Dried fruits, nuts, chocolate, praline note. Maybe a little of that uh, caramel coming through. Very easy drinking. This is 40% alcohol by volume. A little more of a grain note comes through on it, but it still has some of those kind of fruity notes to it. Um, dried fruits, I don't know where we would be going with that. But yeah, I still very similar actually in some of the flavor components to the, the rum cask, which is kind of surprising to me, but much more muted. At 12 years, I'm thinking, is there going to be more of a oak influence on this whiskey? It's just really easy drinking, flavorful. And so this is one of the things I want to find out about Irish whiskey while I'm doing this traveling because to me like a Jameson or a Bushmills the regular Irish whiskeys are triple distilled lacking a little bit for me I want some more character to it I like to say that Jameson to me is something that I like to add a drop of something else to and it changes and it kind of works as a base for whatever else you want to add to it so I'm looking on this journey to really fall in love with Irish whiskey. And I, I like the flavors in this. It's not harsh. I've had the original Tullamore Dew, and I, I sometimes feel like it's a little rougher um, than these. But, uh, and so, you know, like I say, I, I like both of them. I think they're both good whiskeys, and um, I'm looking forward to tasting more of these whiskeys down the road. So we got lots of whiskeys to talk about, and I'll give you some travel advice and tell you how the trip is going and all that stuff as we roll along. And until next time, very small sample, so nothing left to really sip on. Cheers. Slanjava.